Hail and hello everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hello, hail and welcome back. To another exciting episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings prod- Prodcast. That's right, we're prodding this week. It's not a podcast anymore. We're not. We're not just podding. We're prodding. And um, by podding, I mean pods, like like uh, you know cells, little little itty bitty small pods. We're not potting like potting soil or you know any other sort of funniness. We're 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 prodding. We're poking around. So this is the Random Heat and Ramblings podcast going forward. No, it's not. It is a podcast, and you are here listening, watching today. So thank you so much for being here um, and being a part of it. My name is Jesse. I already said that. You heard that in the intro. Um, back again to uh, talk about some things. So um, the camera angle actually looks good. You can see something right over my shoulder here that uh, I'm going to try to bring out and at least show you guys that are watching here in a little while um so just kind of keep your eye back there and and then hopefully the uh the audio because what i want to show you requires me to you know use the microphone as well don't know how well it's going to pick up on on this mic but we shall see um so uh yeah i uh I'm, I'm I'm glad to be back home. Actually, back home in my own house, back in the the Hegrihus cave, as I call it, which I just started calling it that right now. I've I've not called it that before ever. Um, but this is uh, my space, and it's good to be back in my space after having been on an amazing uh, three day long or three nights. Um, you know four days, three nights long retreat in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. Went to go visit Papa Olufsen, um, who is the uh, the master craftsman behind Fjallvatir Workshop. Him and his wife um, run an amazing store um, and have their wares available on their website, as well as some, if you're in the area, go to any local uh, crafting events where it's you know kind of heathen centric or pagan centric focused you know that sort of thing in uh, in that area of North Carolina if you ever see them there I always encourage encourage people to get some things um, to accentuate their their heathen space or their pagan space um, it is a very of course uh, Norse or Germanic pagan um, focused on the styles of, of things as you probably already know at this point from hearing and watching my content um, the Alvatier workshop is my number one go-to place for uh, ritual items such as rattles, drums, um, and, and all that. He makes wonderful rune sets as well. Um, <clears throat> incense burners like, you know, this one. This was made by, by Papa Olufsen years ago, um, shortly after him and I first met. Um, 
So you may be wondering why I'm talking all about, you know, the Alvatier workshop and the Olufsen's. Uh, that's what today's episode is going to be about. I am not sponsored by Fjallvatir, but I do support everything that they do and, and encourage people to to treat themselves or their loved ones to some of the the fare and some of the the, the products and some of the things that services even that uh, Fjallvatir does provide, um, and also to sort of do a recap of the. Uh, you know, extended weekend retreat that I just uh, alluded to, you know, so before we guys get started, you guys know the drill. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to my patrons and uh, YouTube channel members. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please be sure to do so. For those that are just listening on the Spotify or other platforms for just the podcast experience, um, Midgard Musings is the YouTube channel. And I would greatly appreciate if you guys Gave it a uh, gave it a subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all that fun stuff. Um, and also check the link tree link in the description or show notes for all the other ways that you can uh, keep track of what I do on both Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and then there's other links in the link tree link for other ways that you can support what I do. You can buy merchandise, of course, become a patron on Patreon, become a channel member on the YouTube channel. Um, you know, just whatever you see down there, whatever fits your uh, fancy, whatever suits your fancy. So uh, as I mentioned last week, I uh, was um, going to the uh, what is known as Ulferhus, which are the Olufsen's. Uh, it's it's their place in the mountains of North Carolina. And um, so, yeah, my myself and a and, uh, member of my tribe, the one of the original uh, founding members of our tribe, um, Patrick, our law speaker, uh, accompanied me on this excursion, on this adventure, on this pilgrimage. And I do. I want to talk about um, some of the things that you know that occurred, and and you know, um, hopefully help encourage people from all walks of life, but especially pagans and heathens, to find ways to um, accomplish the things that were accomplished here this past weekend with uh, myself. You know, clearly the folk, and uh, and Ulferhus. So this, uh, uh, you know, this event, this retreat, as it were, um, has been referred to as uh, fire on the mountain. So we do hope to have this become a regularly recurring thing every year, um, around the same time every year. We want to make this an annual sort of pilgrimage, a, a, an opportunity to um, maintain the relationships that we've established between the two um you know entities as it were between clearly the folk my tribe um and the household and unit known as uh Uferhus. so the olifsons would love to you know do this on an annual recurring thing um and this year uh was again a a tremendous just all-around experience there was a lot that we accomplished um and things that no matter who you are um nobody could probably compare you know, like it, it, it's it's hard to put into words the the things that we experience because when you when you have those you know personal you know interpersonal relationships um and and, and get get a chance to hang out and spend time and and, and do things of 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 value of, of meaning of purpose you know with people um to, to put it into words is is sometimes difficult. So um, I'm just going to basically start from the from the beginning and, and hope that this retelling of things puts a spark in some people's minds to again try to relive or recreate something of some of, of similar meaning um, in, in 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 their own lives. So um, the the trip started early early last thursday morning a week ago today as you guys are listening to this and watching this a week ago today um the journey began you know so before the sun came up i went to pick up patrick loaded all the stuff up of his in my car and started the journey you know east northeast ish um to north carolina Smooth, smooth drive, you know, nothing really crazy to, to report, but, but the anticipation was so, you know, palpable that, you know, 
the time kind of flew by, you know, like we were having conversation. It was a nice chance for us, for Patrick and I to just, you know, get mentally into that and prepared for, for what was about to happen. Cause there was a lot planned. Um, some of which specifics I'm not going to talk about here. Um, but a lot of what was, um, planned for us involved, you know, drum circles, rattle circles, a sweat lodge session with, with drumming and rattles and other, you know, primitive style, uh, primitive instruments, primitive style instruments like rattles and, and bone, uh, pieces and, and, and of course drums and all that. Um, so there was, there, that was planned. There was hiking, um, in the mountains, hiking to stone mountain, an immersion ritual was planned, meaning we were going to get ourselves fully submerged into um, frigid cold waters that are from the mountains. You know, so so we we had all of this planned by Papa Olufsen, you know, in his in his unit, uh, his wife, and I'm sure had had a huge. Well, and I am sure she his wife had a an enormous role to play in all of this. Um, she was the one who made sure that we got, you know good meals, um, you know, had all of the accommodations needed, you know, if we needed, uh, you know, towels, pillows, blankets, you know, between the two of them, um, couldn't have asked for, for a much better experience as far as, you know, uh, being guests in someone's home and, um, having the hosts treat us with such dignity and respect and honor. It was a, a truly wonderful exchange of, of, and, and tying of, of weird with each other. So, um, you know, the, the, the plan to do all these things, you know, we were, we were going to be arriving on Thursday, um, get settled in, um, with a meal, of course, you know, uh, get our, get ourselves acclimated, um, into the space, um, have a meal, maybe soak in the hot tub, you know, have drinks. Um, there was, there was a, a sumble planned, which we did do. I'm going to get into that in a moment. And, um, and then the the rest of the weekend day, you know, like Friday and Saturday were planned with hiking and other sort of uh, spiritual activities. You know, they, we had um, uh, sacred smoke sec ses eh, sessions planned, sections, that too, different sections of sessions, all, all sorts of things. But yeah, the, the sacred smoke, so like, you know, resin burning with like, you know, frankincense, myrrh and cold, uh, copal. Um, and other sorts of sacred resins, you know, the sweat lodge, uh, the immersion ritual and hiking. So all of these things, plus other stuff, again, that I'm not going to divulge specifically, um, was planned over, you know, those those two days. And then we would be departing and making our way back home on Sunday. So um, as many people may have remember, uh, at, at, you know, last week, there was a huge a hurricane down in Florida, Hurricane Nicole, and and there was a you know the storm system that came from that hurricane. Uh, once it once it made landfall, you know, traveled its typical you know path of of hitting the southeast, coming inland, hooking back around towards the coast, and 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 going north northeast, uh, which means that you know it was basically going to hit the section of North Carolina where we were staying um by that weekend and um some of the plans that that uh were made were to be outside camping and with with you know of course grilling like campfire like cooking on the campfire drumming um all sorts of outdoor activities um so when we get there thursday you know like we get settled in the weather was was unseasonably warm you know for for it being the, the middle of of november essentially it was uh unseasonably warm well by the time the weekend closed out you know the temperature had dropped probably a good 30 degrees um and it was feeling much more like winter should feel uh, or at least late fall so um we get there thursday get settled in um and early that evening is when the rain started to to come in and the rain didn't quit until essentially you know late late friday night into saturday morning and then there was some more rain that came by saturday but we'll get to that here shortly so we get in thursday get ourselves you know settled in um 
we get shown our respective, you know, um, living quarters for the weekend where we were going to be sleeping and all that. And then, you know, it was, it was about time for dinner at that point or, or pretty well close to it. You know, so we, we get the, the grand tour of the, of the property and, um, you know, have some drinks. We, we do some runic divination, you know, Papa Olufsen cast some runes. I brought our tribal runes, which he actually made, um, made of elk bone. Um, and, you know, we did a lot of that with some drinks and then there was, you know, a toasts, oaths, toasts, oaths, and boasts, <laughs> um, for, for the Sumble session. So, um, you know, a lot of toasts to the gods, toasts to, um, ancestors, um, boasts of, of great deeds that have been accomplished and, and great things to be done, you know, um, no oaths were sworn. You know, so there was no nothing of of that magnitude being done, but just a general, uh, you, you know, uh, sumble ritual of 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 great joy to be shared. Um, so so mighty words were spoken over our our, our respective drinks. Um, Papa Olufsen had not ever had the um, Highland Park Vikings honor single malt scotch. Um, and uh, I believe he's a fan, a forever fan. We we polished off the bottle between the three of us that night. Um, it's not that easy. It's not that hard to do. It's very easy to do. Um, if I had just two people with with a, a strong enough, you know, tolerance of, to alcohol, there's two two people um, could definitely polish off a bottle. But between the three of us, we made short order of it. Um, you know, so we're we're getting into. Um, you know, the, the, the festivities of the night, you know, merrymaking and, and then it's, you know, let's go outside and, and um, soak in the hot tub, which actually, um, let me back up. Um, after, after Sumble, you know, um, we, we retire to a, a section of Ulfurhus where Papa Olsen does most of his work related stuff. So all of his crafting and everything is in a, is, a, is in a dedicated section of the house. And, um, it's it's got a wood stove in there. It's got all of the furs. That's it's you know it's like it's a wonderful place to be. It's like this is heathen heaven almost in a way. It's just you know the furs, the runes, the the primitive style artwork, and just everything. It's it's got a really neat feel and and a great uh, you know vibe or whatever you want to call it to it. So after Sumble, right, we we get our drinks and whatnot, and we we go downstairs um to to this place and of the house and um we we do this um like trying to find the right descriptions for it but a, a ceremony a ritual of sorts um with the use of coal um so it was you know liquid uh, uh coal bits that were added to you know liquid to make like this this black smudge which all of us, all the three of us, me, Patrick, and um, Olufsen, we marked ourselves all in, in in the same or similar fashions. You know, there were marks done over our eyes for vision. I think it was eyes, um, ears for hearing, lips for speaking, um, heart. Yeah, there was something done over the heart, um, and then arms. Um, and so we we all did that. Like uh, uh, Olufsen, Olufsen and and Patrick smudged me, I uh, myself and and Olufsen smudged Patrick, and then them two <clears throat> smudged me. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, and you're wondering what you know what is that even about, um, I, I I did post um, some photos online um, on Facebook um, and Twitter and Instagram. So. I'll I'll tell a little bit about that in those posts. So if you're not following me on those platforms, be sure that you do so that way you you can be filled in with the with the specifics about it. Um, but at that point, you know, um, we 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 do, we do that ceremony, and that kind of set the tone for the weekend. You know, like I, that 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 was the thing that kind of kicked us off into the the fire on the mountain um, retreat. And then at that point was when it was decided let's uh, let's let's soak in the hot tub. So we go out there, 
with our drinks and stuff and we soak in the hot tub and we get some of the residual, uh, you know, um, coal ash or whatever on ours, on ourselves, get that mainly cleaned off. Um, and then one of the big points of, of the, of the whole trip, um, that was planned for to start the, uh, the following day on Friday, uh, we decided to kick off early and, and get started right then and there. Um, and all I'm going to say is that it was uh, the most intense uh, shamanic ritual this, of sh shamanic magnitude that I've yet been involved in. Um, my first shamanic journey was about a year ago um, last year. And uh, so, so this shamanic journey uh, kind of, you know, uh, it, it indicated the the year had passed uh, since the first one, and it was you know, time to revisit this. Um, but again, the, the conditions were much different. The, the purpose behind it was much different. Um, everything about this time versus my first time was, you know, everything about it was different. Um, so very profound. Um, the following day, Friday morning, um, was, you know, it, it, it was, it was like being woken up from a dream in a way or being woken up from being woken into, I guess is, is, is probably a better word to describe it. Being, being woken into a new person, a new experience, because so much of what had happened the night before, um, resulted in shamanic death um, and rebirth so you know coming into life friday morning for me was was like again you know waking into a totally new person a new environment a new everything and um you know so i, I get my bearings and stuff drinking some coffee just kind of figuring everything out figuring out life as I was at that point, kind of like relearning things of the world around me, uh, down to the very uh, simplest of things, such as speech and being able to talk coherently and, and and have, you know, conversations that that resulted in more than just grunts or or nods um, or very basic forms of, you know, communication. It was, it took a minute and it took a little while for me to get back to that state of normal as it were so we uh you know I, I hear the plans of you know we're gonna go to the waterfall uh, widow's creek falls um and do our immersion ritual and then dry off into clothes for hiking and hike stone mountain and as i mentioned earlier right we had we had come into the state on the on the coattails um, or just ahead of really the, the, the storm system that was hurricane Nicole. <clears throat> so of course, you know, we're far, we're far enough inland where, you know, it was, it was mainly just rain that we were getting some high winds later on, but the, the, the rain is what we really got the brunt of. So Friday, when I get up and we're, you know, talking about going into the river and, or the waterfall and then hike stone mountain, you know, there's it's raining as we're talking about this, you know, and we're looking at the radar and it's like, Oh, you know, there's breaks here and there. So it won't be too bad. So anyway, we, uh, you know, we leave the house and it's, you know, again, raining really good. And we get to the widow's Creek falls location. Um, and it's raining still, but at this point it's like, well, we're, we're, we're getting into the river, right. We're getting into the water. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, raining from the sky, us getting wet's not going to matter here in a little bit because we're about to get really, really wet and cold. Um, that's the other thing. It was that water was probably <clears throat> probably every bit of mm, probably not much lower than the low fifties, but you know, 52, 53 degrees. I'm going to guess. So um, we 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 stripped down to just our boxers. Well, it was swim swim trunks, right? We had dry clothes over top, and then the swim trunks underneath. So we uh, barefoot, and th and that was 
like I say, this was one of, one of the many things that that occurred on this whole trip that was just so enriching, you know, and invigorating to stand out in the 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 rain in the mountains when it's you know in this in probably low 60s it wasn't very cold but then to stand in the water that is in you know 50 some odd degrees and not to just stand in the water but to climb barefoot once again climb rocks and climb the 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 base of the waterfall to reach like there was this kind of like this eye in the the the, the face of the waterfall that we climbed to bare hands bare feet and then dunked our whole bodies, like our whole upper bodies, just immersed ourselves in the waterfall that was coming down in its in its icy coldness, you know, 50 some odd degrees. Talk about talk about an experience that will wake you up. Like I said before, you know, I was woken into a world that I had to kind of relearn some things or, or figure out my place, get my bearings, right? Being the passenger to Widow, Widow Creek Falls. You know, all of this stuff is just going through my mind. I'm, I'm processing things. And then to step into that water and get my head and my upper body and just everything immersed into this cold water. Talk about a shock of like, now I'm awake. Now I'm back. You know, um, it, it, it was like the most, it was kind of like a, uh, like a physical, I don't know, like not as, you know how like a, uh, what's, what do they call those things? The defibrillators where they where they they shock you back to life it was like that but obviously without the the medical personnel it was like nature's defibrillator <laughs> widow's creek falls was nature's defibrillator it just it, it gave me a jolt you know it takes your breath away when you when you get met with those conditions the 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 cold cold water it 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 like it shocks you literally shocks you takes your breath away and for a minute you're like you know but man right after that like within seconds i was like yes i can take on i can just run up this whole mountain if i wanted to so spend a little bit of time in the water kind of like riding the the current because you know like i said it had been raining so the water level was up it was rushing really well um, and it like, you know, lands into, into certain parts of, of at the base of the waterfall where they're like, you know, pools of, of deep water. So, you know, you can almost like slide. It's like a, it's like nature's water slide, you know, nature's splish splash or, or splash mountain or, or whatever amusement park of, of the water variety that you want to call it. But it's exactly that. It was like, this is, this is great. You know, and if it wasn't, you know, 50 degrees out there, I could see spending a whole day afternoon just enjoying it. But this part wasn't about the enjoyment of it so much as it was about the what needed to be done. Um, and what was what was interesting is is you know the the shamanic ritual that took place Thursday night originally in the plans it was that you know we were going to do that Friday night after the immersion ritual, after the hiking, after all of that. Well, clearly that. It was it was reversed, and I'm so glad it, it it worked out that way because, you know, knowing what I went through Thursday night and into Friday morning, um, I don't know how well I don't know how it would have turned out had that been the thing I did after hiking, you know, several miles in the rain and in the cold, and then being in 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 the river and stuff. I don't know how things would have reacted for me that way so having it done the way we did i felt was the way it, it needed to be done it was it was as it should have been so you know we get out of the immersion ritual dry off put our clothes um back on and then head to stone mountain and again it's it's raining on and off on the way there so it's like wow we just got out of this river you know dried off a little bit and now we're about to from the looks of things get soaking wet again Sure enough, we get to Stone Mountain, get to the trail that we're going to hike, you know, um, and and we're still literally at the base of the mountain. We're, we're not, you know, five minutes out of our out of out of the vehicle. And then, man, the bottom just opens up and it's pouring down rain, not just pouring down rain, but like sideways 
rain. You know, it's raining sideways. Yeah, it was raining sideways. Um, you know, and I had a rain jacket on, but because it's, you know, blowing around you and stuff, I, I, I got soaked to the bone about halfway up the mountain. You know, there were a couple of, of breaks or reprieves of the rain where, you know, the hood that I had on to keep my head somewhat dry, I could take off and, and let my head breathe and, and stuff. Because again, like I said, it was it was not a very cold day. Um, by temperature standards, you know, you obviously you get wet and it's windy, you're going to feel cold, but it, it was, that was actually refreshing because hiking up this mountain when it was, you know, 60 degrees or so, you know, you build up a sweat, especially with like a rain jacket on. I was, I was, I was huffing, I was puffing, man. I was, I was like, man, but you can't quit at that point. You know, like you, you're like, well, I'm already committed to this. So the only thing to do is to keep going you know and we and we keep going we make it to the summit which is you know i think probably three thousand feet or whatever a elevation three thousand feet or more elevation um thick with fog up there like it was it was wild you we, we would stand on these um you know granite shelves of of the rock of a billion year old just to think that the age of this mass of land that we're standing on um, and, and the things that it has been exposed to over, you know, millions upon millions of years, standing there yourself, putting your feet on that earth. Um, again, just, just an invigorating and enriching experience. And then you get up there and you know, and you're like, well, I'm 3000, whatever feet above, everything and but you can't see you know 10 feet in front of you because the fog is so thick and then the, with the wind and whipping around you know the fog clears a bit and then next thing you know here you are like i see a 600 foot drop into the valley below and then the fog comes in and it's concealed again and you can't see straight in front of you just an alarming just i mean it was like whoa you know that's you know and then you look back back down the mountain and you see you know, way, way, way down there, a little, 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 little bitty blip of a building or something where you started. It's like, puts you, puts lots of things into perspective. You know, you think you're this, you think you're that. And then you see, you know, comparison and size and it, it does, it puts things a lot into perspective. So, you know, you're at the summit. Um, I'm, I'm drenched like a rat just, you know, and now it's like, well, the only way to go back, the only way to go is, is back down the mountain. Um, and, and, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like that Fleetwood Mac song, um, climb the mountain. Now I turned around it's landslide, right? Lyrics from landslide. Um, you've got to go back the way you came. There's no, you know, there's no like, all right, I'll take the elevator back now. Or, Hey, can somebody come get me? Nope. You know, you got to walk your own two feet back down the mountain and again it's it's continuing to rain um my feet my legs my my knees just everything i was, I was like i am just ready to stop all of this but you can't give up you can't quit you got to keep pushing and we did we made it back down the mountain um and i realized look like we're talking like think overall we're talking a little bit over three less than three and a half miles from uh, for you know, for the whole thing, round trip from the bottom top, top to bottom, round trip, less than three and a half miles. But add to that, it's three and a half miles in the rain, in the wind. You know, you're soaking wet. It 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 puts things into perspective. You know, your your morale gets beaten down when you're when you're feeling uncomfortable, and when you go through those ordeals the first thing you want to do is, is find a way to, to, to be relieved of it. You know, it sucks out here getting rained on my feet hurt. My legs hurt. You know, I'm out of breath. I'm sweating. I stink, whatever, like all these things that you're going through that make you feel just like, like garbage, <clears throat> you know, that ordeal, those ordeals. And I've talked about this on, on this podcast and I've talked about it on other you know, um, in other content before about ordeal breeding worth. I'm not the only one that said it. Matter of fact, I'm not the first person to say it, but it's, it is an important thing to remember that adversity, ordeal, these are the things that 
make people find their worth and that make people worth something. They find the, the cuts of their, they, 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 they find what they're made of through difficult deeds and through difficult times. We all do, but it's when, when you hear somebody talk about it, you know, so like as listening to me, hearing me talk about this ordeal of having to, you know, be subjected to, you know, frigid cold waters and then climb a mountain in the wind and the rain, you know, that all may sound like, wow, that sounds incredible. Uh, let me tell you, at the moment and at the time, I did not think it was incredible. I thought it was incredibly stupid. And as a matter of fact, I remember thinking, what kind of maniacs are we to be doing something like this at the time that we're doing it? Because I remember, I remember sitting here thinking, I'm like, there's not even the animals that live out here are this stupid, <laughs> you know, like they're over hunkered down somewhere, you know, underneath, uh, you know, bushes or or at the base of a of a of a rock lean to or something like they, 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 they found shelter and they're waiting this storm out. They're not out here, you know, exerting energy, but that's what you, that's what you face in the moment. And it's okay to feel those feelings. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be, you know, distraught. It's okay to feel the feelings that you're going to feel when you're enduring adversity and when you're going through ordeal, just remember when you get through it, because it's going to, it's going to stop. Like, a, you, you know, it's for a moment when you get past it, when you get through it, you're going to feel such a reward after it, because you you know that that moment is what you needed to be tested. So we made it through the mountain. We survived. We survived the immersion. We get back to Ulfurhus. Um, There was some time left for you know, dinner to be finished, which was an amazing ham, uh, ham uh, dinner. Um, that 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 night, I know, was that Thursday night? Yeah, Thursday night was the was the ham, and then Friday night was pot roast. So the pot roast had a little bit, you know, um, of time left on it to cook in the in the crock pot. So we we killed some time by heading into town, visited the liquor store, um, grabbed a bite to eat for lunch, and then came back and just kind of relaxed and got ready for the evening friday night's dinner was again a, a delicious pot roast that uh olafson's wife made in the crock pot all day it cooked in that crock pot for like seven or eight hours and then we went into the um I'm trying to remember if that was the that was the sweat lodge night or was that the yeah, that was the sweat lodge night because Saturday night was our camping. So yeah, we did our sweat lodge. We did, you know, an hour in a room that we got heated up with, you know, because it's again a room heated by a wood stove. So we got the we got the wood stove up to it was hovering between like the the high eighties to near a hundred degrees for like an hour, you know, where you're just sitting there drumming and 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 stuff. And I posted a video um of one moment that that i captured um of that hour-long session so if you haven't seen it yet it's 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 here on the youtube channel so check it out but yeah we spent an hour in a in a nearly 100 degree room sweating yet again another ordeal um and trust me guys like all of these things safety was 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 key right so before we did anything, you know, Olufsen was was very um, attentive to making sure we knew the safe ways to do things, right? If we slipped, if we fell or whatever on the mountain, you know, um, because of the hazards of, of the altitudes and whatever, you know, one wrong step, one wrong move, if you're not paying attention and, you know, your ass is grass, you're toast. So, you know, making sure that we knew what to do if we if we had a misstep you know, um, same way with like the sweat lodge, you know, if we got to feeling too uncomfortable, we, you know, we had an out, we could step outside. Um, we could open a door. We could do whatever we needed to do to get some relief. Um, but I'm happy to say that that was not needed. You know, we didn't need to call upon any of those lifelines as it were, you know, we, we endured the ordeals that were presented to us. Um, and in the best way possible that we could have, like I say, we we stayed the whole hour in the sweat lodge. We did our our shamanic journey Thursday night into Friday, 
following that, we all of us immersed ourselves into you know frigid cold waters and then dried off and immediately went for a three and a half mile hike in the wind and the rain. You know, um, slept really good. You know, on Friday, obviously it was a, it was an early night for a, for all of us because we had just accomplished so much. So we you know called it called it an early night after that was I say early it was you know nine thirty ten yeah it was like nine thirty I think called it a, called it a night. The following morning, get up and it's, you know, time for a, a bit of a relaxing sort of uh, less than strenuous hike. And at that point, the weather had cleared. So it was a beautiful sunny day. Um, the temperature dropped a tad and it was only going to continue to go down later on in the day. So, you know, we're down in like the 50s or so now, I think. Um, still kind of warm, but not nearly as warm as, as the, the first day and a half that we had been there. Um, and this time we go and we we check out some of the sites off of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, don't remember all the names of them, but they were they were less, like I say, uh, strenuous hikes, you know, um, hikes across pastures, um, you know, not nearly as steep grade inclines and stuff to get to to places. And uh, it was it was Papa Olson and his wife Patrick and I. So the four of us did that. The, the the hike on Stone Mountain the day before it was just the three of us. Um, Cindy hadn't accompanied us, so we go off on that hike. Get some really great, uh, you know, photographs in, and um, on the way back to the house, we we stopped by um, a few locations to to check out um, New River. Um, and the funny thing about New River is if you guys uh, search, you know, just Google search New River in, in, you know, North Carolina, let's say. New River is the name of the river, but it is one of the oldest rivers in the world. It, 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 it's existed for the last something like, I don't know, several hundred million years or, or longer. Um, and it is also one of the oldest uh, sorry, one of the only rivers that flows south to north. Um, so, so that's really cool. And and again, after the rain, like the the intent was to originally go to to New River, get our feet in the water, wade through it a little bit, and and feel those energies. Um, but the river was moving quite fiercely again from all the rain um, that happened over Thursday and Friday. Uh, there was a lot of of extra water flowing through there so that wasn't that wasn't feasible but i did get a chance to get to the river bank get my hands in there splash some on my face and at least touch those waters and, and be there by it so that was special um and then when we get back to the to the estate to Uferhus, it was time to set up our camp because we were going to be camping out there um, on the property that night so as we're getting our camps and all that set up, the majority of, of um, the structures, like there was a couple of canopies. So basically, uh, all of that was done prior to us arriving. Uh, all of Papa Olufsen made a, a really cool like a fir or evergreen lean-to um, structure to keep the camp area dry, at least one side of it, you know, from, from the wind and stuff that would blow. Um, and that way we had some sort of primitive shelter um near the the fire pit when we were grilling if in case it did rain which it did um so but but it, it it fortunately did not start until we at least got all of our tents and stuff set up um but once it did start like we had we had just brought up a bunch of dry wood to start the campfire with and we had just started the campfire and then we start feeling little water droplets from the sky which turned into not like a torrential downpour but there were moments of it raining pretty good so it got you know all that dry wood that we brought up it got wet um papa olofsson stayed vigilant over the fire with this like massive beach umbrella to <laughs> to keep the the wood as dry as he possibly could and, and keep the the camp fire area dry as well um, but the temperature went from, like I said, being in like the sixties and fifties over those days to being like down in the forties and thirties. And then ultimately overnight, I think it got down into the twenties, um, or at least hot, you know, high twenties, upper twenties, low thirties. 
So, uh, and, and windy, like extremely windy. There was probably gusts of, you know, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds that would come through. Um, so we sat it out there, you know, it, it eventually stopped raining about, about the time that it got dark, you know, so around six ish, maybe seven o'clock, the rain had finally stopped. Um, I think it stopped even a little bit beforehand because I remember getting up there, sitting down and it, and it being, you know, not not raining anymore. You could see bits of blue sky. So by the time it got dark, we were we were not having to deal with rain anymore, but it, it got cold quick. Yet another ordeal, right? The, the, the unexpected rain that we had to put up with and then the cold. So, um, you know, I, I had full intentions of sleeping in the camp. In, in a tent that that uh was raised that night and had it not been for just you know 40 mile an hour gusts of wind i would have because i was bundled up really good i had you know blankets and sleeping bags and furs and all kinds of stuff to keep me warm but that wind was just jarring and knowing that i had you know to get ready and leave the following day and, and i wanted to make sure that i got the best chance of getting good rest so feeling like, Hey, I got nothing else to prove. Um, I took my butt into, into the house and, and laid down on the futon where I'd been sleeping the last, you know, couple of nights. So, um, and, and there were some moments throughout that night because of the wind, like things getting knocked around outside and, and, you know, noises that I wasn't familiar with, you know, I, I still getting woken up a few times throughout the night made it, made it, made an interesting sleeping experience. Um, but Sunday morning rolls around. I uh I get up, get you know, loaded up and everything, and we uh enjoy ourselves, you know, shopping for some items for like I got some stuff for my wife. Um and Patrick got some stuff for himself, you know, some of the Fialvatier items. Um, one of which is actually right here. The other one is over here. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. I'm not going to, I'm going to get it here in just a minute, but this one is a really cool bone sax. Um, and it's half of a, who is this? Uh, whatever the part of like, so this is an elk bone, by the way. Um, but it's the part of the elk's bone that's, that is like the forearm. It's not called the forearm, but cannon, maybe cannon bone. I don't know, but it's the part of the bone that's like right, you know, right here on the on the arm before they get to the to the hoof. Um, and it's normally like I get like I said, again, the this is half of it. It's it's split half down um, the middle. Which is uh, a very common practice um, in a lot of primitive tribes, because you get more use out of the animal if you. You know, use parts of it and then. You know, so in other words, instead of having one limb that you would make one knife or whatever out of, you have, again, half, and then you have another half. So you have two knives instead of one or two utensils instead of just one. Um, but the tip is 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 super sharp. You're not going to, I don't think, really be able to see it so well, but it is. It's, it's, a, it's a, if I were to really poke some money good with this, it would probably draw blood. And even the edge, like the edge is not, you know, razor sharp, but you know, you, again, you stab somebody with that or whatever you poke somebody with it. it it's definitely going in. Um, and it's really cool. Like the texture of the, of the bone right there. I think it's going to, um, what do you call it? It's not going to focus that well, but this is, a, this was a really neat gift. Um, and then this thing behind me i uh, don't know how well this is gonna work um so this is this is a cool story friday was my was my was my birthday i'm going to show you what this is in a minute you probably already know obviously i moved out of the way you know what it is but i'm going to tell you the story behind it so friday was my birthday right and uh thursday um papa olison and, and his wife presented this gift to me and this is what they presented me 
with at first. Um, this is obviously a drum beater. It's got a wool beater head. This is a, a holly branch, and this is coyote fur. You know, so um, they present this to me, and I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I got another, I got a drum beater for my drum, which is, you know, not my drum, but the the drum for our tribe, the really folk. So I'm like, cool, I've got another beater for that drum. And it was funny uh, because as they're presenting this to me, Cindy was like, we need, we need a drum roll. So the next thing they grab is this. Okay. Now, again, I'll move my hood down for a minute. This, uh, I can't even get it all in frame here, guys. Um, but anyway, they pick this up and, you know, Papa uh, and Cindy hold each side of it and Patrick holds a side of it and they start, you know, just drumming with their hands like, drum roll, please, you know. And uh, and they go, well, here you go. And I'm like, cool. And I'm thinking this was it because they go, here you go. And I go, well, great. I got this beater. Um, and they go, yeah, well, yeah, but you need something to play it with or play on it. You know, they need you need something to play it on. And then they like all look down. Of course, Patrick had no idea, but like Papa Olson, he looked down. I'm like, no. Right. And so what we've got here, folks. is 38 inches around of goat skin, goat hide drum. So I don't know how well this is going to resonate um, on the microphone. I don't know if this is going to, don't know if this is going to work or not. So just kind of bear with me a minute. See if this, see if this sounds any certain way, but. So anyway, again, I don't know if it's coming through on the mic or not. Um, if not, there'll be more uh, footage um, that I can try to share. I actually have some some something planned for this this coming weekend. Um, my wife's supposed to go with me outside and maybe get some uh get some footage this is not gonna work out i'm trying to figure out how i can get this uh, like i had it before maybe that'll work all right um put that there so there you go um <laughs> that was quite an ordeal another ordeal there's that word again ordeal so anyway 38 inch goat hide drum for my 38th trip around the sun. To say that I was flabbergasted, I was left speechless. I, I was brought to tears. Um, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to say. Because I've had I've been I've been so into the drumming thing recently. But that specifically, like a, a big, big drum like that, that just sounds like rolling thunder when you play it. I've been having my eye on one of them for a while. And, um, you know, to have one now as, as, as a gift for my birthday. There's I, I still get like emotional just thinking about it and. um knowing you know not even really fully appreciating the kind of work that goes into making these things but just knowing the caliber of the gift that i was given you know such a high high honor um 
and I intend to to use this in in a lot of future content um, as best I'm able to in the area that I'm able to do it in. You know, I've got the river nearby that I like to go to, and I think that playing this drum on that river is going to make for some really good content that I hope you guys will look forward to seeing. So, uh, you know, to try and condense four days or three 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 uh, three nights, four days of of stuff into just one video one one podcast you know those are those are the highlights but i guess you know i could sit here and and tell you guys all about how great the trip was and how much fun i had and how much fun patrick had and how much we just had fun with the olafsons but what i wanted to do is i wanted to tell you guys about this experience because um, an experience like this doesn't come very often for many people. As a matter of fact, there will be people that will never experience anything even remotely close to, to what I experienced this past weekend, you know. But what I want people to know is that it takes work, it takes effort, it takes ordeal to make something like this happen. If it sounds so amazing, if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know, oh, you know, I feel like I was there through your retelling of it. You know, a lot of times when you tell a story, you try to um, provide people with enough details that put them in the position that you were in when retelling the story. And I hope that at some points in time, you know, you kind of felt like you were on that journey with me. And but to realize that that didn't come without a cost. It didn't come without sacrifice. It didn't come without hard work. It didn't come without ordeal. But the reward for it, you know, don't give, don't give up if, if you're going through something that you have a goal in mind. You have, like, I want to accomplish this. And you know, you know, in your heart that it's, it's, it, it's going to happen. And then you run into these snafus you know you get you get rained on you get um you know you get soaking wet you get cold you get sweaty you get miserable you get upset whatever the roadblock is that happens in your life don't let that deter you from continuing on with the with the project with the thing that you're doing see it through you're going to feel so rewarded after the fact, if, 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 if for no other reason other than that, you know, you can say, I did it. I made it through this ordeal. I made it through this challenge. And now I'm better equipped to handle the next challenge that comes my way or the next ordeal that, uh, you know, that, that's, that, I'm, that I'm faced with. Um, it's the only way to grow. It is. It's the only way that you're going to grow. You're not going to grow in times of ease. In times of, you know, relaxation, growth happens when times are tough. You're you're growing in those moments, and it, and it may feel like you're getting torn down. It may feel like you're getting beat down. Um, and there may be moments, and there may be times when that 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 is literally what is necessary in order for that growth to happen. Um, I've used the analogy before that trees bushes plants flowers etc you know require pruning from time to time in order for 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 strong growth to occur you know you start letting things just not get take care of if you're not out there pruning every now and then if you're not taking care of yourself in that way and allowing the storms that that need to come through and you know glean a little bit and and take away some of the the dead unnecessary matter then you're just going to be stuck you're not going to be grow you're not going to be allowed to grow um if it hadn't been for all of these things you know and it didn't just start when we left and 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 headed out there on Thursday it didn't just start then there's been ordeal there's been things going on leading up to this uh, most recent event, fire on the mountain, right? There were things go going on and leading up to that, which were tests and 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 part of the ordeal as well. 
you know, 100%. Um, but all of us knew that regardless of the challenges, regardless of how difficult things could be made, um, we were, this was going to happen. And it was going to happen in the, in the way that it was meant to happen. And it was woven in, in the threads for it to happen this way. But we had a part in weaving those threads. The threads weren't just sitting there ready to be played with. You know, part of that work landed with us. Because if I hadn't done the things with my car to get it ready, we wouldn't have been going in my car. You know, if Patrick didn't make the preparations through his job and, and, and finances or whatever, right? Same way with me. Like if we hadn't made those preparations and accommodations, we wouldn't have made it out there. If Papa Olufsen didn't do some of the crafting work and stuff to, to help with, you know, funding this whole trip, you know, doing the things that were needed there, um, it, it wouldn't have happened. Just like everything about the trip proved to me that ordeal really and truly does breed worth. Sharing space with him and his wife and seeing his kids for a little while too. But just sharing that, that, that the experience, exchanging of gifts, exchanging of knowledge, wisdom, love, you know, all of it. You can't replicate that by talking with somebody online, not even a phone call. You know, you can only get so far. You can only reach a certain point with interactions like that. I know we are modern heathens and we are, you know, practicing old ways in modern times. Many of us are. But part of the old, the part of the old ways that need not die are the things that we experienced with each other, you know, encouraging each other, being there for each other. So that way we don't fall or slip in the river. You know, when we're, when we're crawling barefoot and bare hands on, on slippery rocks, finding our footing, but knowing that a brother is, is reaching out his hand or his arm to catch you for you to hold on to. That way you know that I'm not in this alone. I'm here with my with my kin, with my kith. I'm here with a brother. I'm here with family in the most pure sense of the word family. You know, and that's and that's where I go back to whole the whole like I've talked about before, familial titles and calling people brother this and brother that. Like, dude, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna call you brother unless I've shared some moments like I've shared like I had this past weekend you know, or something similar to that I, I, I can't, I can't bring myself to doing that just because I think you're cool, just because you think I'm cool, just because we share a similar belief system in, in, you know, Northern European paganism. Um, without, con without, without the in person, without the boots on the ground, without the grassroots level experiences, Family is that, that that doesn't exist. It doesn't happen without it. You've got to have it. And again, not taking away from what value there is in long distance relationships, because modern heathens, you know, modern times where we got modern amenities, modern conveniences. It's 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 part of the whole you know bit. We 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 do things that are are a bit archaic maybe at times or, or feel archaic but I, I, again there, there's purpose behind it you know Some people can say well why, why, why worry about you know heating with wood when you could just you know crank up your electric furnace or whatever it's like well, that's not the point it's unless you've experienced it yourself unless you've gone through those things you know i don't know to me it's like a meal tastes so much better when you know you've earned it when you've worked hard to earn a meal, the meal tastes so much better. I'll tell you right now, the first thing that I ate after the big ordeal, um, Thursday night into Friday morning, you know, the first thing I ate after all that was uh, trail mix, you know, and and beef jerky. But I tell you what, 
I felt like I was dining on a five course Michelin star meal. You know, things that are normally just, you know, the, the, the types of snack foods that you sit and, you know, nosh on when you're watching a movie. Those items tasted like the best thing I'd ever ate. And water, you know, I drink water every day, but the water that at that, that moment was like the best water I'd ever tasted, you know, like those things, again, you're not going to experience that by hearing about it, by talking about it. You know, I've had people um, respond to some things that I've posted recently and, and, and being a bit, I don't know if they're just trolling or um, genuinely curious, but like, you know, and I talk about immersion rituals and a shamanic ritual. And what's an immersion ritual? What's a shamanic ritual? Well, if you have to ask me, then I, then, then half of me is, is thinking that you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're just trolling. You're just uh, trying to get a rise because then, and then again, you know, other parts of me are like, well, there, there may be genuinely people who just don't know what I'm talking about. And so either way, it's, it's engagement, right. On the platforms. It's the thing that I always ask people to do is, Hey, like comment, share, and subscribe. You know, I don't care what you comment. I don't care what you say. It's an engagement. It's something that engages me and, and, and engages everybody and puts something out on the table for a potential discussion to, or conversation to stem from it. You know, cause I'm not the only one that looks at these comments. Other people see them too. So my responses, your comments, you know, these are the things that can spark conversation amongst people and get our brains in gear and, and thinking about things along this nat along these, uh, along these lines and, and, and in this nature to experience what I'm talking about for yourselves, you know, cause I can sit here and talk for an hour or more about how much fun I had, but that's not really what this was about. It was about a retelling of of the most one of the most impactful and profound experiences of my life that I shared with other people and 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 it was one of the most profound experiences of their lives individually and then collectively because we were all there together with each other and we all did things to support one another and we experienced these you know challenges and ordeals together um, the, the experience was not just profound for us individually, but it made for a profound experience collectively. And it's, and it's something that will never escape our memories. We will live with these memories forever. They will be a part of us and they are a part of us forever. Um, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you guys, maybe live. Sort of live. So you guys know the heron is my philia. I've talked about this in, on recent episodes of the podcast before. Um, and Olafson, Papa Olafson made this shamanic ritual mask for me um, in the style of a heron. These are goose feathers. Um, I believe it's coyote fur. Um, and it's an animal skin face uh, mask. But, you know, the the representation of the heron um, and I'm just going to put it on so you guys can see, see it in real time, you know, I can do this. I can even do this if I wanted to, you know, but I don't know how good my voice is coming mm -hmm. through here because there's not a real mouthpiece here, but yeah, imagine if I did my podcast just like this all the time talking like this and such so anyway there's there's that too um patrick got one uh and kind of like in the form of the shape of an owl um i'm getting a phone call as i'm recording a podcast it never fails i'll call him back later um but yeah guys um Again, why am I talking about it? Why am I showing you all this stuff? It's because, yes, I mean, it was a great time and I, and, I, and I do love talking about it, but I hope that the experience that I shared, the retelling of it is um, something that inspires you to find a way to experience something of, of, of similar 
um, profoundness. You know, it may not be a shamanic retreat for four days, three days, whatever, three nights in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Um, maybe it's a small camping trip. Maybe maybe it's a, a one night, you know, getaway in 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 the woods or something nearby. Or maybe you take a a vacation day, you know, and have a, a long weekend away in the in in nature somewhere. Whatever it is, right? Whatever it is that you're able to do. Um, do it with somebody that you have strong ties with or that you can have strong ties with. Find a way to build those bonds with people and don't give up just because it gets difficult, just because it gets hard, just because there's a challenge, you know, about it. The challenge is what makes it great. The hard is what makes it great not to be, you know, funny. Ha, ah, that's what she said. Um, but it, you know, it makes me think of like, uh, you guys have ever seen that movie, A League of Their Own? You know, Gina Davis, Rosie O'Donnell, Tom Hanks, you know, where she quits. Um, she quits the team. And Tom Hanks' character is giving her, you know, a bunch of crap for it. And she just kind of says, you know, it just it just got too hard. It, I, I couldn't handle it anymore. I quit because it just got too hard. And Tom Hanks's character says, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. And the hard is what makes it great. It is, man. It's what makes things so great is is the challenges that go along with it because it conditions us guys it, it, it prepares us for those times and then when when we get a breathing when we get a chance to breathe when we get that breathing room you know we feel almost all the more accomplished for having gone through it it's like yeah now i can earn this steak i can earn this drink i can earn this rest so go out and earn it you know you're gonna suffer through life anyways might as well suffer in a tactical way and, and do things that are going to prepare you for greatness. So um, I do hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of me just talking about my own experience. Um, maybe one day I'll get Patrick or, or all of us on here either together or separately to kind of recap and talk about it together. It'd be great to get their thoughts and, and everything about it. Cause it's more than just me sharing it from my angle. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, you know, you guys have got this, um, and uh, yeah, so thank you so much for for listening and watching today. Um, wait to see what happens with next week's episode. I know we're we're coming up on some holiday times of the year. We got the Thanksgiving holiday in the U.S. coming up, and then for so many heathens here in about a month and a half, um, you guys have got your you know midwinter celebrations coming up. So um, we'll definitely see what's what's on the plate for next week. And I know I still have some viewer requests to go through. Um, so I haven't forgotten if if you put a comment or a request out there and I haven't got to it yet, uh, maybe just put it down in the comments or, or whatever below, or you can write in or call in. But I do ha still have some more to go through um, from a recent post on the Facebook page. So we'll be getting over to that here soon. Um, yeah, I think that pretty well wraps it up. So you guys have been great. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching and listening today. Don't forget to like this video, share it around. Comment down below your thoughts. And until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you. And may your ancestors always smile upon you.